Hey guys, Sanjana here. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing really well. Now, if you're new to my channel, then welcome. I do a lot of study, career, finance, money, side hustles and productivity sort of related content. So if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, then please do so by hitting the subscribe button down below. And I've also got an Instagram page as well, Success by Sanjana, where I talk about a lot of the same content there as well. So if you haven't followed me on there, then be sure to do that. Now, as you can tell by the title of today's video, video, I'm going to talk about how I save 60% of my monthly salary. So I'm going to obviously break that down for you, talk a little bit about my budget, show you guys a budget that I use on a monthly basis and really break that down and show you what my expenses are and basically what my goals are for 2021 in terms of, you know, investing, finance and personal finance. So uh, if that's something of interest to you, then please keep watching. So I'm just going to give you guys a quick recap of of 2020 and what I sort of achieved you know in terms of my investments and my finances so last year I was able to save about 60 to 70 K um, and I was then able to purchase three investment properties last year now mind you the first four months of the year I was living at home so my expenses were almost zero um, obviously after moving out my expenses have increased but um, a lot of the savings that I had accumulated for my first investment were from 2019 so for that that reason I was able to purchase three investment properties last year and also I have done a video on my channel where um, after moving out of home I explained what my expenses were like and how I spent my six-figure salary so if you haven't seen that then I will leave that up here somewhere for you guys to watch that as well so my expenses haven't really changed that much but um, I was actually living very very conservatively and I was able to save a lot last year whereas a budget I'm going to show you guys today I'm a little bit more free with my money I like you know I'm spending things on my, my personal health now. And so you guys will see that in my budget breakdown a little bit later in the video. Now, just wanted to sort of introduce the idea of a budget to you guys. I know I haven't really spoken about it a lot on my channel before, um, but I do use a budget on a monthly basis. This is where I track my expenses, make sure I'm not, you know, spending outside of my means or, you know, spending unnecessarily on things which I don't actually need. So I keep myself very strict and very accountable with this because I do have goals and finance goals that I do want to achieve so I'm always um, looking to make those happen and if you guys haven't seen my goals video then I will also link that up here for you guys to check out so what I like doing each month or at the end of each month is just to track my expenses for the last month and just see you know where I can sort of cut down on my spending what I can do to really you know be able to reach my financial goals um, each of us are different we have different financial goals and that is totally fine as long as you are saving some portion of your income and in terms of me purchasing for my investments last year, as mentioned, I was living a very sort of minimalistic lifestyle. I um, wasn't splurging on things. I've also got a video on that. So if you are interested, it will be linked as well. So you can check that out on how I actually, you know, was able to save for three investment properties. Now, jumping into the strategy for 2021, uh, there's a lot that I want to achieve this year. So um, you guys would have seen in my goals video, I have mentioned that I wanted to launch a business. I'm not going to say what it is at the moment, but I've been wanting to launch this business for a while now so I definitely want to make that happen so with that being said as you guys all know you know launching a business isn't easy there's a lot of you know upfront costs involved um, a lot of sort of money required so for me this year it doesn't look like I'm going to be saving a lot of my money. I feel like a lot of it will be invested into the business. So what that means is obviously if the business is up and running and I'm generating some income, then there is a possibility that I may be able to leave my nine to five job. And if I was to leave my nine to five job, then you know if I was to purchase another investment, um, then I feel like my serviceability won't actually be there. I won't be able to get another loan. Um, so for this year, it's looking like I won't be able to purchase another investment, which I'm fine with because I'm really keen on launching this business. Um, I feel like now is the right time for me to do it and if I don't do it now then when am I gonna do it so um, yeah basically the plan for this year is to save as much as I can and whatever I've obviously got is to obviously have an emergency fund um, and then just invest the rest into the business hopefully you know a few months down the track the business is up and running and I am able to sort of you know pay myself as well so yeah that's what my plan for 2021 is looking like I wish I could say that you know I'm ready to purchase another three investments this year but I don't think that's gonna be 
possible unless I do obviously stay at my nine to five job but I feel like if, if you're launch, if you're running a business and you're also you know working nine to five as well it can be very hard I've just obviously got to manage the two and I'm not too sure when when I will be leaving my nine to five job yet so um, I will keep you guys all informed and updated as to when that does happen um, you guys will be the first to know but yeah as for now I'm still working my nine to five nothing has changed but but I'm just going to look this year to save as much as I can save as much as my you know nine to five income that I can so that you know whenever I do make that decision to leave then I don't have to sort of you know struggle and I do have a savings um, emergency fund to live off now we're going to jump into the budgeting spreadsheet that I mentioned to you guys earlier this is something that I've been wanting to share with you guys for a really long time so I'm going to give you guys a proper breakdown of everything that I spend um, all the savings that I've got mind you it's not much because I did obviously purchase those investments so I'm starting back again on zero I just want you guys to be mindful that the budget that I'm going to be sharing with you guys is income from only my nine to five job it doesn't you know um, account for any income from my YouTube channel any affiliates sponsorships or deals like that so um, just be mindful that that income is separate and I won't be talking about that in this video this is purely my nine to five job which you guys all know does pay me really well and um, I've done a few videos on my channel about my six-figure salary so if you guys are interested then you can check that out as well um, but yeah let's just jump into the budget now all right guys so I'm just gonna take you through my budget now and really talk through and give you guys a bit of a breakdown as to what that looks like and what my you know expenses are and how I actually save about 60% of my monthly pay. So starting off here, so as you can see, I've got my expenses down the side and then the amounts. So obviously, you know, I've categorized it into housing, food, personal care, transport, and miscellaneous. So obviously for my rent, um, monthly basis, I'm paying about $1,100. Um, so that is obviously going to change, but I wanted to just reflect um, what my circumstances were at this stage obviously as you guys all know I'm moving houses next week so that will obviously increase a little bit because I am moving in on my own and the thing that's going to obviously offset that is my gym membership which I won't have to pay because obviously there's already a gym at the at the new apartment so um, yeah I mean it is what it is but at the moment um, I'm paying about $1,100 a month for my rent. Um, utilities, I've accounted for, you know, obviously the entire year. I usually pay it on a quarterly basis. So I've obviously um, figured out the monthly cost for my utilities. So this is like, you know, my water, electricity and gas usage. So that comes to about $75. My phone bill is $90. Um, I spoke about this on my channel before as well, where I told you guys that I'm obviously going to be purchasing the iPhone. I purchased the iPhone 12 and with that I had about 150 gigs of you know internet usage as well data so what I've done to sort of you know save some money is to cut down or completely disconnect my Wi-Fi so whenever I do connect to my laptop or the TV or anything at all I am using my hotspot for my phone um, so yeah all together that comes to about $1,265 uh, for the month and then moving on to food uh, groceries are about $300 a month I've obviously increased this um, from last time because I am sort of purchasing food that is a bit more of high quality, more healthier, um, more sort of alternative versions of food which are obviously more costly so uh, for that reason I have put in $300 there and it generally does end up costing me about $300. Um, restaurants I've put in about $50 a month. Um, I try not to go eat out a lot but obviously that one-off occasion does occur so I've um, put aside $50 for that so all up $350. Um, now if we move down to personal care this is a lot of money for I feel like you know an ordinary person so um, eyebrows five dollars a month that's a non-negotiable um, my gym membership is forty dollars a month so ten dollars a week so that obviously I won't have to pay when I move into my new apartment but obviously the figures will still be the same um, my health insurance is quite expensive I pay hundred forty dollars a month and then I put in obviously fifty dollars a month as well for my health and wellness this could be anything around you know me just going to see the physio get a massage things like that so also my laser as well you guys all know that I am very um, strict with my laser routines so I don't obviously go every month um, I go I think to do full body I would go for about 
five sessions in a year. So I've divided that um, by 12. So this comes down to $80 and all up that's $315. Um, transport, we really aren't going anywhere. I don't have any Opal card or Uber um, fees or Uber costs. So um, the only thing is petrol. I share my roommate's car at the moment. So I'm paying for petrol and that costs me about $60 a month. Now moving down to miscellaneous, so entertainment I put down $50, shopping is also $50, so $100 there. So as you can see my monthly expenses are about $2,090, my yearly expenses would equate to $25,080 um, and my monthly income, I haven't really disclosed this ever on my channel, but my monthly income is $5,214.82. Um, this is obviously after tax and after my HEX um, payment has come out. Obviously, the more you earn in Australia, the more HEX you need to pay back, which is your student loan. So obviously, a lot of my pay is taken up by tax and my student loan. So, I mean, it is what it is and you just got to sort of deal with it. But that's how much I get um, at the end of the month. So that means if I minus my monthly income minus my monthly expenses, I'm left with $3,124.82 a month. Um, so yeah, I mean, at the end of the year, I should have about $37,000, $38,000 at the end of the year. If we look down here, the percentage of my savings over the income equates to about 60%. So there is how I am able to save about 60% of my monthly income. So obviously I just wanted to mention my current account balances as well. I don't have many accounts set up, but I do have a transaction account, which my pay does come into and I obviously then go ahead and pay for anything that is outstanding first and then the rest sort of goes into my savings and offset account. So obviously in my transaction account I don't really have much because this is obviously after um, I've paid for everything. So this is a current balance at the moment or whatever the remainder was from my transaction account I would pump it straight into my offset account but because I have recently um, fixed my loans for one year um, I obviously don't have an offset account so I've opened up a savings account and that's where my money is sitting at the moment. So I've got um, this is obviously an approximate value $10,000 I've got sitting in my savings account at the moment which is earning me um, a high interest rate at the moment because I am an employee of the bank so we do have staff bonuses so I am earning a higher amount um, but yeah that's everything that I've got at the moment. Um, if we go to the pie chart I've created so you can see um, just consolidated the uh, monthly spending here into these main categories. So as you can see, 60% of my income is saved. 24% um, is of housing and utilities. Um, food is there and the restaurants and everything like that. Personal care, um, transport and miscellaneous. So yeah, that's a bit of a breakdown of my monthly spending and what that looks like. With this monthly budget, I will be tweaking it and you know making that available for you guys very soon. I do want to add a bit more formulas in here to make it really easy for you guys to you know plug in your numbers so stay tuned for that all right now moving on to the goals that I've got obviously I do have some financial goals for this year specifically I want to learn a bit more about personal finance um, ways that I can save more money invest more money even though I won't be able to invest this year maybe a small amount I may be able to invest but I want to learn a bit more about you know ETFs um, shares trading etc and I think um, that's where I'm going to sort of allocate a lot of my time, you know, educating myself, learning more about cryptocurrency. Um, you guys all know I, I am sort of invested in cryptocurrency as well. Not a lot, but um, it's enough to sort of, you know, keep me interested. And as you guys all know, the crypto market is obviously booming at the moment. So if you'd like me to talk about my crypto, then be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment down below. I'd be more than happy to do that for you guys. Um, but other than that, I hope you guys found this informative, helpful, useful. Any questions at all, please do leave them down below. I'm always responding to my comments first thing every morning. If not, then you can also obviously email me at successbysanjan at gmail.com. Um, I'm always responding to my emails as well. But that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will catch you guys in my next one. Thanks, guys.